Okay, here we are on this uh, this Thursday evening with the open grand finals between Bud Squad and Quantum Flux. I am London Calling here with my very special friend, Marxist. Marxist, how are you this evening? Oh, just ducky, hoping this one doesn't go down like the other one last season. Yeah, right? <laughs> open has not been... This finals, this are just playoffs in general, right? They We haven't had any DDoSs right yet. Yeah, uh, I guess so... I should say I shouldn't say yet because that would be terrible. Uh, but there definitely was their share of problems as this match has been rescheduled and delayed um, at, at least a week already, or at least at least a couple days. Yeah, uh, but, client yeah. problems on Sean Bud, I believe. So hopefully everything's okay now. Sean Bud isn't actually in the server, so he's okay. We don't. We do see some some flux people coming into so everything seems okay yes and this is this is a this is a great rematch this these teams fought a couple times they met a couple times during one time during the regular season and then a couple times during this postseason already and it was they were both all really good matches uh you know is this one of these things where like a lot of people there's been some controversy this season i think uh about these high caliber players playing in a division like open but uh, it's it's really cool to see like all these teams like really play. Yeah, we should see them go. You know, if they didn't go hard all season or or whatnot, then uh, they probably will this time. Since in general, you're gonna make yourself about six hundred bucks for winning open. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's it's higher this year. I know the prize pool is a little different this year since thing, season since. There was a little more money coming in, but uh, not not for open though. Open oh, will always wow. be the same. The prize pool will always remain the same, and uh, yeah, most of the other divisions have gotten a prize pool increase in some of their most notably invite, but not open for some reason or another. Maybe maybe because it's it's too easy to win open. But I could be the first one to tell you it's not. Absolutely <laughs> You've not. You've been there. It is it is hard, let me tell you. You gotta like what you almost have an extra month worth of matches during the postseason and yada yada yada. Let's talk about the teams themselves. Let's go over the lineups right now. Like tonight it looks like they're gonna have their uh most of their starters here, at least for well, I hope they have all their starters. But uh fun for Bud Squad we have on medic Whisker Biscuit, the one and only crossbow champ. Uh Sean Bund will be playing either Scout or Pocket. We don't know. Probably Scout, because he probably wants to win this one. Uh, Lang will be on Romer. Star will be either a, another Soldier or Scout. Most I'm probably going to guess Scout. And of course, Pala will be playing mostly Sniper. Um, do you know, are you familiar with the Quantum Flux uh, roster of Marxist? I know the people. I haven't seen them this season. I did get the chance to cast... Uh the bud squad a few times throughout the season already so it's pretty pretty familiar with the, uh what they've been doing i know quantum flux is sort of a, a mixture of some of the old zensity rosters and then a couple other people that are signed up picked up along the way uh i know we're gonna probably see christopher on demo mans probably yes the the Im Im variably immortal tic tac on probably pocket yeah Maybe correct there. We've got Phaser, a uh, long time ago invite player. Kind of did, I think he did IM a couple seasons ago, maybe last season. Uh, and he's, he's, he's been around. Uh, and, he'll be playing, and he'll be playing uh, Romer for the Oh, tonight. good, good. And then Cringe is going to be playing Scout. There, there was a time, London, where people kind of said Cringe would be the next big thing. So that'll be interesting to see what he does here in this game, since he kind of took a break for a little bit and then has now reappeared in open form. And Panaminian Sal will be the his scout partner for the night, good yes. contributor to the TF2 community from Panama. So nobody can complain here. We're, we're we got they have they have a Central American. And Bud Squad also has a Central American, it's okay, or South American. South. I'm sorry, um, I need to learn my geography better. But uh, there they are, right? Um, yeah, both of these teams have have done really really well. Quantum Flux is sort of this like uh, this team that has that that all sort of announced their intentions really early on in the season. They said they really wanted to win. They really wanted to move to go to Maine. 
Um, they they wanted this was the fastest road for them to get back in the invite uh, after the Zen City roster died. So this is they all decided to play their mains. They all wanted to try really hard and win the game. And on the flip side, you got Bud Squad here, who you know they. They kind of had an unstable roster for most of the season. Ozzy, we got to see Ozzy play as scout a lot of the time for Star, and Ozzy was phenomenal. And I think that that guy is is amazing. Like to watch, it's really fun. Um, the rest of them is also they're also fun to watch too. But I would say that Pala and uh, and Sean are probably the the main the main threats from Bun Squad. But the rest of them kind of also are in uh, good faculty as well. Yeah, there's well when you finally make it to the open finals, there's no you can talk about relative degrees of skills, but you know, things things are pretty much gonna be okay for the, the open finalists. They wouldn't have made it here if they weren't uh, weren't solid. Absolutely. I know um, one thing we will see is uh the Bud Squads ten tends to run an unusual lineup, whereas Quantum Flux is gonna probably run a more standard sort of game. So it'll be interesting to see if they finally figured out, you know, what to do uh, in that since meeting earlier didn't turn out uh, the way they necessarily would have wanted it to. Uh, yeah, and you know, from talking to the dudes on Quantum, you know, it's not necessarily Pala that is the main threat here. I think they know how to contain Pala to a certain extent. They can't stop him from hitting these, like, amazing, crazy 200 ping, uh, you know, headshots from, like, you know, wherever. Um... But they can contain him to a certain extent. And once that happens, I think that they're mostly concerned then with containing Sean on Scout. I mean, that's at least what they, they said that they expected that to happen. Um, because deep down, these Sean and all the rest of the dudes on Bud Squad are, are competitive people. They want to win. Um, so there's that. That's, that's kind of the way it is. Uh, so Quantum Flux is the upper, the upper seed here. So they have to lose two. Bud Squad has to lose one, and they're done. That's it. They're coming up from the lower bracket um, after dispatching Meat Market uh, earlier list this week or last week. I am I don't even know what day it is today. Uh, but some know, time ago, some time ago, the Meat, Meat Market, Market got their uh, their poop handed to them um, after losing five rounds in the second half uh, when Sean just went absolutely. Cuckoo bananas. Uh, so there's that. That that is how they got here. The road from the lower bracket is long and terrible, as I'm sure a lot of a lot of friends could tell you. Uh, but here's Bud Squad in the grand final. Uh, you know, and I don't know if a lot of people wanted to see this, or if a lot of people wanted were hoping that other teams would sort of get the chance to like beat these quote unquote sandbagging teams in open. But I think everybody has proven that this division is incredibly competitive this season. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. As the game has sort of aged, you know, you and I started about the same time. People now in Open that are in their first season are a lot better than they used to be. I'm we sorry. uh back back when we started out, the only way you could get into Comp TF2 was like you'd lobby a bunch and develop a ton of bad habits. But now teams of players on new Open teams have played a lot of Highlander. They're familiar with how teams ought to be run. Or they went through some other system like UGC sixes for a couple seasons or something like that. And so we our new open teams come in really quite prepared. Yes. And it's a season or two before everybody's like, oh man, this new guy is he's gonna be the next big thing. Sure. I mean you see players emerge all the time. Most notably I think a lot of the people on the meat market were surprised a lot of people and they there weren't a lot of really big names on this team and they just end up being this powerhouse, uh, you know, that just started destroying all these other teams in, in open. Um, they actually, they did not lose a match the, for the regular season, but of course they got that 16 and no curse and were dispatched in, in, uh, in the uh, lower bracket. But, uh, and I think the only people to go 16 and 0 and open and win was, was last season with, uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, the, yes. the 16 and 0 curse is strong in open. It's happened a couple times. Probably the most memorable one for me was the old was uh, Garbage Plus. Yes. Going out so early. That was like season 11 or 10. I think that was also when people really were noticing like, oh my god, this this guy, this Duwatna guy. He can yeah. he can shoot some stickies. 
That was the birth of the Duwana legend. <laughs> so, right. it should be pretty interesting tonight. See, see some interesting stuff. I I do rather uh, to fanboy a little bit. I do rather like watching Tic Tac play Soldier. So that should be fun. I I personally played a full season with Christopher. He was good times. Play you know of of it would probably be easier. Uh, if you don't know who's on on this roster, to list who hasn't been an invite, <laughs> right? Oh, so so let's participate in that. It would be Whisker Biscuit and Star. That's it. Everybody else has played invite. That's crazy. That's nuts. I'm impressed that they're all here. Um, but let's get some predictions going because we got Sal is now in the server. We're probably going to be going live pretty soon. Uh, what is your prediction for this first Badlands match? By the way, first match is going to, or map is going to be Badlands. Second map, if it goes to a second map, will be Viaduct. Uh, I'm going to probably give it to Quantum Flux here. It, it just feels to me like their roster is much stronger. So, you know, take that for what it is. I would like to see some Viaduct. The last the last season's open finals did manage to go to two maps. Uh unfortunately no G pit this season. So but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna thing. go Quantum Flux, probably somewhere in the margin of like five three, five two. I'm gonna agree with you there, actually. I also have my money on Quantum Flux uh right now, but mostly for selfish reasons, because I think that these two teams on uh, Viaduct are they they play incredibly close and it's it's pretty crazy. Like both all the map that the the match that they had on Viaduct before, uh Bud Squad narrowly won and it was it was a big deal. Um it was it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and then Quantum Flux, Flux came back in this in the postseason and took a took a map off them. Um and I think that Quantum probably is stronger on a five CP than they are uh on a, on the map like Viaduct, on a King of the Hill map, but uh, yeah, we'll see, I guess. I still expect them to, to uh, give, them, give them a good fight here. Yeah, Power's influence, due to his being quite a good sniper, would be a lot higher on Viaduct, because a, a lot of teams don't play Viaduct particularly well, and it gets a lot worse when there's a sniper constantly killing you. So yeah, it's just like a complete breakdown of an already pretty squeaky system. So... Yeah, I I kind of feel that in there, London kind of bouncing off is it, it seems to me like if if Bud Squad can manage to to win out on Badlands, that that momentum going in for them into Viaduct might be the kiss of death. But we gotta we'll have to see a Bud Squad that survives Badlands. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, I totally, like, just did not think of that. Like, obviously, Bud Squad has to win for this to go to Vidoc, so now I kind of want Bud Squad to win, but I I don't know if it's in the cards. I guess we'll see. It's going to take a, a quest, some questionable headshots from a certain Brazilian uh, for these rounds to go over, and hey, it's Badlands. Everybody knows the map. And it looks like we're about to be going live momentarily. They're setting up classes right now. I'm going to watch... I'm gonna watch Chris for the first uh, this first mid here. I'll get some flashbacks of of seasons past with Christopher. Phenomenal demo, really cool dude. I like him a lot. Yeah, he was he was good fun. So we'll see, and he's also one thing that he always bragged about was how good his rollouts were. So he's coming yep. out. You, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab this one from you, London. Sure, He's spamming them a little bit as they go up the slope. That's kind of a new thing that demos have started doing, and he immediately wipes out Whisker Biscuit. So that's going to be problematic for this mid, and Bud Squad's going to go. Oh, Star eats a nasty fight from Christopher. And Pow actually went headshot. sniper to Second mid. Headshot. <laughs> Two headshots already to mid. Wow, and that, that, wow, holy crap. Quantum just pretty much destroyed him. Chris put, what, two stickies pretty much directly on Whisker's head there. And yeah, he, he got annihilated. Lang goes for the bomb. No go. Blink has his uber. So we'll probably see a quick cap a second and then a, a last push, the first last push of this finals. Yes, uh, Blink did a really, he made a smart decision there, showed his uh, medic expertise. He was hanging out all the way in choke. No way that Lang could get even a rocket on him right there. Uh, so here we are, the Quantum Flux crew trying to poke in here. They're looking to see if they can get in without having to to lose anybody to a stick trap on these doors. And it looks like Bud Squad is 
forward holding right now. Sizer's got his stickies on the door, but Tic Tac has cleared them, and he's taking this Uber. They're going lower right right now with Chris. Uh, they, they're, they're getting in for free pretty much here. And they are gone to bust one off guard, but no, they have a heavy. Yeah, the heavy comes in there. to save the day, but there's, yeah, scout on the point, heavy can't drop down fast enough. Yeah. So that's the end of that last, they kind of just snuck in there, they James Bonded that last. Absolutely, I mean, Badlands' last ne is nefarious for capping so so quickly, and you gotta be, you gotta have something on there, you gotta have sticks on point, you gotta have some kind of deterrent uh, for some a scout just running on it and ending your defense. So here we are at the second mid of this game, and Sizer going down really early to Tic Tac, actually. Tic Tac jumped him right away and just took him out and choked. And it looks like Blood Squad is already leaving. They've, they've given up this mid for loss already. Lang still staying in here, trying to get Blinky, who is just kind of chilling. But no, Blinky's actually in trouble right now, but he takes him out with a crossbow. What a beautiful shot. Very nice. Yeah, Let's sometimes see. medic's gotta defend himself. Yes, if they, hey, nobody else is gonna do it for you, might as well do it yourself, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And here we go. Uh, so this time, Whisker actually has the Uber to defend. Um, they're not in a great position to defend second, so they're gonna have to opt to defend uh, last here. Let's see if they have another forward hold coming right now, and I they think they're, they're getting out, yeah. They yeah, don't want, they don't really want to do anything. Here. We've seen an open finals past a certain overseer uh, get backstabbed on one of these Uber v Uber forward holds, but they're just gonna opt to go straight in London. So probably an Uber cycle into dry push from Quantum Flux, but Sal oh, goes down. So but Shamba down to two health. Oh, also going down. Star, Star and Shamba. Shamba. Wow, Jinx. Um, yeah, I would say that the blue Uber there was better in the long run, but at the same time, it, it's it's sort of obviously it didn't pan out too well for them. And this is gonna be another round for Quantum Flux. This is, this is looking like a roll. I really hope Bud Squad can get it together here. Uh, I just hope that it comes down to Sean Bud deciding like, you know what? We need two scouts because why not? Oh yep, and there it is. Pala is on scout now. Well, this is usually the evolution, right? Pala starts as a sniper, goes to scout. If that doesn't work, then Sean Bun goes on scout and Pala goes back on sniper. We'll see what happens, so. So headed uh, into another mid with the Bud Squad headed under. Gets cringe, get phaser. Tic Tac oh. is going to get himself a whisker biscuit and then get taken out. But so Pala's this... able to kill Blink, so it's okay. Yeah, everything. This is still probably a win. Christopher's still trying to do what he can. He does manage to get Sizer before he goes down. So we'll see Pow and Sean Bud cap up on this point. Not really going to be able to do a whole lot because Tic Tac and Phaser are actually probably going to... They have the potential to be coming in hot. Yes. But uh, I don't see any hotness coming, no. So we'll see a, a mid-stalemate. So our first actual, like, not last push of a, of a mid. And I just want to point out something right now. Shaman has switched to scout. Uh, you know, after the after this mid, he has switched to scout, and uh, Pal is back on sniper now. Uh, so that's that's a little bit telling. The Ubers are even for all intents and purposes. Um, and there it is. Chris goes down in choke to Pal's headshot, and that means Bud Squad's gonna be able to get into choke here for free. Blinking in a lot of trouble here. He gets taken out after he gets shot in the back by Lang, uh, but shot in the front by Sean Bud. But big Tic Tac and Phaser with an excellent collapse here on this uh, on launch pad right now, and Quantum Flux is, is feeling good. Sizer's is the last guy up. He's fighting this one v one sort of desperately with the scout, and he's in a lot of trouble too. One pipe comes out, but he's gonna go down to Phaser, no problem. Big plays by Phaser that that for that exchange. Wow. Yeah, that it looked like a total disaster for Quantum Flux, but they just managed to to hold out even after Blinky was down. So really good fighting on their part. Christopher goes down, but Sal manages to get Whisper Biscuit on the point on mid. It's a little bit of a sniper action. Gets cringe wow out of the door. And Blink. Oh wow. And Blink so was that's actually on power. Chris Krieg. He had to felt he was he was caught he's probably felt very confident. Like alright we got crits we're gonna be able to do the magic that cool. But no, that is not the case. Power is He's ruining the game. Let's just say it. He's fun ruining right now. If he was in a pub right now, I'd be so mad. I'd be the maddest pubber in the world. Uh, but be that as it may, Bud Squad ready to push last, and they got a sniper, and it's equal Ubers, and this sniper happens to be very good. 
the only thing for Quantum Flux is, is they know they, they can expect the sniper, right? So let's see uh, if Pala... If, who's going to snipe him? It looks like Sal is on sniper, so we're going to have uh, Latino on Latino action going on right now. Let's let's see where uh, where he's peeking from. Looks like he's just in spawn. He's just hanging out. Both Chris and Sal are in, are in spawn right now. Well, they've got a pyro. Oh. Sal goes down right away, but the pyro's on the right side. Crits and comes a surprise in. Crits! Whisker goes down to it! That... Oh, but Sean Bud, all the point sticks are dead! Oh my god, he almost gets it! Sean Bud almost steals the round. Lang getting taken out by Phaser is hanging out in that little hallway on the lower left there. Uh, and Pala is chilling and choke, ready to kill somebody. Uh, he's got 63 health right now, but it doesn't really matter. Nope, down to 26 from, and then taken out by some spam from Phaser. I gotta say, I, I never really thought Phaser was all that great. I've seen him play like a few times, but this season he has done nothing but impress me as, as a runner. I think he's he is a really good soldier, has definitely improved playing with these guys. He had it once, he just had the time to warm up now. Right? Oh, oh Blink gonna go down to Sean Bud on the trash side. And... Sean Bud turning it up right now, taking out a whole, putting the team on his back a little bit, pretty much killing everybody. Yeah, and we're gonna see... Oh, uh, I don't know. We got we got some Bud Squad here headed to last, and there we yeah, go. So, yeah. Star I... tried to get a sneaky back cap in there, but he, he ended up losing a 1v2. Uh, but it didn't really matter because Sean just decided to destroy him. And here Sean goes back on Soldier again. It looks like he's going to be running Soldier for mids, and then after that he's going to switch off uh, back to Scout for these transitions. Not a bad, uh, not a bad strategy. We'll see how Quantum Flux adjusts to this. Sides are actually getting down all the way to 83 health, but Blinky going down really early, early to Lang from a bomb from below. Just kind of walked up and shot him with two uh, rockets right there. Bud Squad losing a lot of people despite getting Blink really early though, and that's kind of how that that trade goes. Star getting a nice kill on Tic Tac, and now Phaser goes to chase him to clean up the kill. Whisker Biscuit all alone, 54%. He's got spawns and right now, uh, and so that means he's going to be able to, to get still have an Uber advantage. And let's see if they, they're able to stop second before the uh, this Uber advantage means not a whole lot. That's, well, Sice is putting a little bit of pressure on, but he's, oh wow, he's under threat. Yep, Sal knocks him down. So that's, that's, it, yep. that's it for Bud Squad, uh, as far as their potential to push. I don't know if Quantum Flux will actually choose to get up in here. Yeah, it looks like they're going in. So there is a power watching very carefully some things in Upper Lobby, but Star going but down, Sal pulls him in. Right <laughs> Yeah, that's so that'll get the, that's one way to get the Uber out of him. Right, that's, that's a good way to force him, just uh, run on the point there, apparently. I don't know if he necessarily needed to pop there, but, uh, you know, that'll happen. So now Quantum Flux down three people, but with a giant Uber advantage. Let's see if they can hold on to it. Sean Bud on heavy, and uh, Pala showing on scout. He's on the point. He's trying to put some pressure here, but I think he's going to have to back off. He's dropped down to 30 health right now and just get back on last. Quantum Flux, of course, back up to full strength. Powell getting taken out by Phaser is kind of an unlucky rocket there for, uh, for Powell, anyway. Lucky for Phaser. Uh, yeah, but this, not so much this, is, else. this is pretty much the uh, the round here. Lots of lots of Bud Squads stuck behind. Yeah, can't couldn't get out of there and deal with that Uber fast enough. I understand where they're coming from. They felt like they needed to play a, make a play or something to, to try to equalize the Ubers, but that's that's the first half. That's what it is. So right now, we are sitting going in the second half, 3-2-1 in favor of Quantum Flux. We've seen Bud Squad put a little bit more of a fight up uh, here, but Quantum, with some, they got some surprises of their own. That, that crit, uh, that uh, that defensive crit was in just, I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, that's a, it's a high-risk play, but it, when it works, it goes in a frag movie, and it looks like we're going straight into the second half. Right, so... I'm going to watch Sizer uh, this mid. I, I criticized him a lot in uh, the power rankings earlier on this season. I think he has he held his own. He, he never really has played this class before, outside of like pugs and stuff. He's never played on a team. Um, but you know, hey, good on him. He's he's doing it big. But he oh, takes a stick right me. in the mouth from Christopher uh, right there. But he's able to grab a pack and staying alive here. But that means that Sizer is also not doing a whole lot of damage at this mid. Uh, I, I have to force him sort of back out here. 
but now both squad are sort of playing this more passive mid where they're, they're just able to, to get these kills as, as Quantum just kind of jumps into them. And that's going to be a, a mid for, for Bud Squad, only losing their medic that time. Yeah, I'm up. Uh, so we're probably going to see a second push up here. Some chasing of Blink going on. Yeah, he's going to go down to Sean Bud. So that puts the Bud Squad in a pretty good position. But that's that actually used to be an old sort of mid strat where you just sit down in the valley and hope the other team falls. You know, a cringe is going to go down to power. Sean Bud Sean, will be taken out. He just took a 1v3 and won. And they had a medic. That's incredible. Like, <laughs> how does anybody not see how overpowered Sean Bud is on scout? He's amazing. Yeah, that that LAN proven scout. Time has been added. He is. That was incredible. It was really, really nice play. He pretty much just did it by himself too. Didn't even have it to do anything uh, except just shoot people. Pow is peeking in here at main, just looking to see if he can get something done. But Ubers are again equal. Thanks to some big plays by Sean, but he decided just to fight their whole team and win. Oh, Pow had an excellent angle on Blink there. He, you could see, he could see the like the little top of the med, the medic's backpack, but did not get the shot to go. So, no dead medic. Still gonna just see a little bit of a stalemate. The Bud Squad just having their sniper there. We've got cringe on Pyro again. But I don't really know if I agree with that because you know the sniper is going to be sort of the the thing that causes pushing to occur. Yes. So Pyro is not going to have a huge influence over this, unless, except for maybe per potentially being the guy that gets headshot. I feel like you only run a Pyro when you're at an uber disadvantage. I think it's really effective on this map. I think a lot of people who, who play this game competitively could agree with me. Um, Pow gets a nice body shot there on some, on, who is it, Cringe? Yeah, he got it on the pyro, but it didn't really matter too much. Gonna get buffed back up, and he's peeking this, he's peeking it right now. Does he, can he find Blink? The Blinky is staying, he's staying very well. Yeah, of, he's of, staying down in that safety stairwell. Uh, you know, and this is one thing, if, if Pow had called this, that this is where Blinky was hanging out, what I would do here, or if I was a demo, I would just lob some some pipes from below. They're not going to peek you at, at main, so you might as well try to get uh, some pipes in there, because it's a death trap in those stairs uh, when people are lobbing grenades at you. Yeah, there's, you can't see them coming, so they might just hit you right in the face, and... Oh, wow, Ooh, Tic Tac gonna go down Sean Bud baiting Tic Tac into the headshot. That was a ridiculous play. Now just cringe on, still on, uh... Oh, and there it is. Whisker Biscuit down to a spy. This is it. Quantum Flux is just constantly surprising Bun Squad. It's just like this thing like, hey, we know that you guys run a sniper all the time, but we got some we got some tricks up our sleeves. We got some plays in the playbook. That's going to enable uh, Quantum Flux here to push out, although Sean is looking to stop this push. He finds Blinky, calls him, and Pala is ready. He's in a great position to contest Spire. And this is it. On, this Uber could mean a whole lot if, based on, on where they pop and if if they pop, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, ideally going into can. this, you don't want to pop your Uber. If, if you're Quantum Flux, this is yes. something you want to avoid. Oh, oh wow, they the actually surprised him! Diagonal, in through house and then through patio and destroyed them! What a play by Quantum Flux! That was a great positional play by them. Wow, just... That's, hey, this is some great Badlands. I'm, I'm excited right now. And that's why you don't want full-time sniper, because there's nobody sitting on their flank, because they're using yep. a buffed Sean Bud, so... Diagonal was open. And uh, then a combo shows up and kills your whole team. Tic Tac getting taken out again by Pala. It looked like a headshot on my screen, but, you know, not the way it is. Whisker going down again. Uh, this means that Uber Advantage is securely in Quantum Flux's favor as long as they can keep Blinky alive here. Uh, it looks like he's going to be coming through. I don't know if they've called where the sniper is, but Blink's not even going to... to uh, he's not even going to peek that that uh, thing there until Pala's dead. Sal suicides in, gets Sar and Pala to go. That yep, means so that they can walk through. Yeah, we're just gonna see a quick cap a second. Everything should be pretty okay. Looking at looking at Pala's spawn, he's not gonna be a factor in this. So we'll have a quantum flux with Uber advantage. Get ready to push in here. Cringe is going to be running up, uh, not off-classing after his death. There is a forward hold, which this 
this is the time you want to forward hold because Quantum right. Flux is kind of in a jam right now. It's a really bad jam because they're going to have a hard time getting through without popping. There oh, they go, they, they pop in the lower lobby. And they beat a heavy on the stairs. So maybe that'll delay that push enough. We see Cringe going down. Sean Bud gets taken out by Christopher. Whisker and it's... needs a saw right now, but he couldn't get it. Ah. Lang kills himself on the point to stop it. The illustrious <laughs> double wipe! The illustrious oh, double wipe. Everybody's getting mad. Wow, that's that's amazing. Big that's a good play by by Lang. Even though he killed himself, he was able to stop the point. That's that was pretty amazing. You, uh, you very rarely see the double wipe. It is an incredibly rare phenomena, and I'm glad we got to see it today. Right, we made some history. Sal getting destroyed by a very sassy headshot here. Tala trying to make some frag movie shots. Doesn't quite get it on them. And uh, blinking on crits right now. That's the strat. He's got about a 60% advantage, or, well, now even more, 70% advantage now. And they also pick to go on legs. But Pritz has been popped, Sizer and Whisker go down, and even after all of that, it looked like Quantum Flux had the better play there. 4-1! to one. And This is looking like, uh, unless Bud Squad really changes something up right now, this is not looking good for him. Well, London, they've been here before. This is true. Uh, just their last match, they were down 4-0, to zero, and what happened? They won 5-4 to four at the very end of the day. Yep, so we we might see it happen here. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually watch a little bit of Sean but it mid since he's Woo! sort of the, the axis. Looks good. Looks good on my screen. Cringe going down after Sean Bud and it looks like this is gonna be another mid in favor of Quantum Flux. They're having kind of a hard time finishing off these kills though. Bud Squad really baiting everybody and it kinda of didn't really work out that well for him. Uh yeah. Star being the last one up here at thirty three health and he's still on mid so for some reason. He's got to try and get that med pick to uh, not... He's going to die really late, so Star's, Star's got a 20 second spawn coming in now, so Very that second will be capped before he's back. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what the Bud Squad was trying to really do there. Sean Bud got into him really early, and then the rest of the team just did nothing. I think it's um, a little bit of that Sean trying to make a big play. Blinky with a very beautiful surf on the top of Spire. He's not going to have to pop here. Uh, Tic Tac just pretty much killing everybody. Yeah, and we're gonna. Oh, Christopher gonna go down! Oh, oh, gosh. Gosh. That's the second drop from Link of this postseason, I think. The first time he dropped was actually Delang, uh, which is kind of crazy. I don't think he respects them all that much. He's like, yeah, whatever, you're not gonna hit this direct. And then what happened? He drops that Ubers. This is really good for Bud Squad. It means that they're gonna be able to get out here, recap second. Yeah, this also, would be solid for them. And Sal's, Sal is still dead, so we may actually... Oh, big. That's why you don't really want to stack the point when they come in there. Big yeah. damage comes down onto Bud Squad. Soldier getting air suspended. Si laser, rather. Just gets thrown around. Uh, yeah. Blink down to a power headshot, though. No, nope, but wait. Sean Bud's taking out the trash right now. He got two trash frags in rapid succession. They're now at 3v1. Sal on mid right now. Full health. And I don't think he's going to want to even chill on this. He's going to take a one by one right now with, uh, one by one with Star, but, yeah. Looks like he's going to get taken out as well by both Sean, but, oh, and there's another scout down for Quantum Flux. You know, it's with these kills from Pala, it's just like, oh, that happened. It's like sometimes you can see them coming from, you know, a mile away, but every once in a while, they just come so randomly. So Phaser actually picking Sean Bud instead of the medic because he well yeah, that, he, that the med the wasn't strength. there yet. He was hiding in closet that whole time and was like, oh, there are enough people on the point. Surely the med's there. Uh, we get power gets jumped. Tic Tac goes through choke, jumps kills power. Not even really that hurt right now. He's gonna try and shotgun Sizer a bit. A little bit of fight coming back to Lang, coming in hot. This it's all down to box. DM at this point right now, yeah, and it, it looks like because Blink went down really early in that push, they, they took a little too much time getting through Choke. Uh, Sizer had a, some really good spam as they were coming in there and took out Blink before they could really let the, the slow push develop. Um, and this is, this is why this, this should be Bud Squad's round. From where I'm sitting, this should be their round. I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, we do have Cringe on that Pyro, and it may actually come into play because Blinky... Or, or rather, Whisker Biscuit is climbing the spire. So, in most cases, when you see a team climb the spire, 
They're gonna go straight up here and push left, and that's probably where the pyro is. Yeah, that's that would be where the pyro is. But so they're both smart right now, they'll take a scout in on this Uber. It looks yeah, like they're going. They're doing, they got chariot Uber coming in, trying to kill the scout pyro here. Pyro goes down pretty quickly, uh, and it looks like Blink is at seventy percent, uh, but they got some pressure on the point right now. And yeah, a lot no. of too much. Lang Lang did something he almost always did. We're gonna lose the Whisker Biscuit here, yeah. So that's gonna be a second cap easy peas for Quantum Flux. Lang Lang did a thing that he did a lot on the Mighty Ducks back when he played Pocket and Invite, where he went to point, shot the sticks off, and goes up into the tube on last, which is a nice play for a soldier if you're not like doing a whole bunch there for that last push. But uh, there were a lot of scouts on or on and around that area when he did that, so there's just like three unubered players down around the point, so it was pretty easy for Quantum Flux to figure out what to do. Yeah, it, it, you know, my analysis of that last push right there was that they needed some more time to to, uh, to kill some more people. You know, that was it. They needed more frags to come in rather than trying to get more point pressure. They got to remember that they're pushing these things like pretty much 5v6 unless Kyle decides to hit a headshot or two. And even though he was able to, to kill Blinky right there, and as I say that, he gets killed again. Um, at the end of that, uh, at the end of that exchange, that was kind of the reason they lost. Because Phaser coming in on Sizer right now, Fable... He gets Whisker Biscuit. He, yeah, or, okay. well, I don't know sorry. if that's who he was aiming for. Yeah, but he, he killed Whisker Biscuit. Yeah, well, he jumped in on some players there and, you know, through time and space, some rockets weaved around and hit the medic. So <laughs> it, it turned out we've got Quantum Flux with a little bit of Uber advantage, a chilling on last. It's, it's crits again, London. So they're going to hope for the miracle that happened a little bit earlier to occur again. And result in another round win. Also, cringe still on pyro, power on sniper, the usual. We've we've been through this drill already now, so <laughs> right. we'll see how it goes. Uh, and you know, that's another thing too, is that the only way that they're really gonna be able to know this is if they see the beam. Uh, Blink did a pretty good job of masking his call right now, so I don't know if they they know this is coming. Uh, but it looks like Buzz Squad's hanging back pretty hard. They just faked a call right now, um, so Quantum is kind of they're kind of like, oh, what do we do? We gotta catch him by surprise now. We're gonna put some pressure on point. Uh, Chris has not been pots yet, and now it is being pots. The first sticky is wide. It does not do anything. It looks like this is a failed crit right now. Uh, they gives it to Tic Tac to see if he can get some work done. Phaser going down actually now. Power, but not, nothing from the from the crits. And it looks like uh, Whisker also was forced to pop there uh, just because he was scared. But at this point, Quantum is down three people. And if I was Bug Squad, I'd be wanting to get in as fast as possible right now. Yeah, the, there will be no soldiers and no Panamanian Sal for about four-ish seconds. They have to pay the toll too when they go through the shutter door. So. It could, it's just gonna be really tight. Soldiers, yeah, soldiers coming down now. They took a little too long. Sizer's kind of alone down there. Power gets gets a headshot, so that's gonna slow things down a little bit. And now Quantum Flux is on the back foot again. Oh, too many dead that players. That like it went through a wall. That shot looks like it went through a wall. That's and it. Round two. Whisker Let's Biscuit Make it again. in the cap, living the medic dream. Absolutely. Free June, Marxist. Uh, so here we go. This, this is what? The fifth, sixth mid? Seventh mid of the game. Power running sniper again. And I don't know why they keep doing this. Sean but at least on scout for this mid. And I, they're going to do this weird passive Badlands mid, which I think it can work. Uh, but Quantum is just, they're too aggressive with like how they push these things. One soldier oh. just jumps in, then the other soldier's jumping in. These are actually getting taken out, so this actually might go in favor of, of uh, a Bud Squad. They just hang out in Valley and they just kind of let them jump into them. Yeah, the 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 issue here, this it was a strat that was run a lot by uh, Lansky's old IM team, and I always want to call them the Power Rangers, but that was totally not their name, and I can't remember what the name of that team was right offhand. But they ran a strat much like this, just minus the sniper. And you win mid by just staying on mid. Like, you don't need to go down there and fight those people, but they're so afraid of power getting a kill from down there that they decide to chase, and it's an easy an easy fight. You guarantee yourself numbers advantage. It looks like 
looks like there's some exchanging going on in lobby right now. Blinky actually goes down with almost nine. He was at ninety eight percent. I don't know if that will count as a drop. Like I don't. I'm not sure. But yeah, that was that's tough rocks for him. Uh, but at the same time, Sean Bud is just coming up right now. Star able to take a one v one with Phaser and win it, uh, which is awesome. But Whisker still has that Uber, and I'm sure that they're gonna want to use it to to push last and not to save second right now. Uh, Bloodspot's got to be a little bit careful right now. Oh, now, now they don't. Uh, Christopher goes down, and this pretty much means that this is going to be their round once again, um, unless they absolutely whip it. Uber is now popped for red, and they're just going to walk on the point. Yeah, lots of lots of quantum going on the point there, so that should be pretty easy. And we've now got a 4-3, to three, so my prediction is now set to come true. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wish, I wish that, it, I, for, to be honest right now, but I, even though I think it's kind of crazy, I do want to see Bud Squad take a win here. Could be good. It looks like, we'll, let's see, let's see if Quantum Flux adjusts. We've got, we actually have the Bud Squad being a little more aggressive and a lot more passive play and Tic Tac with a nice air shot on the Lang. Yeah, Quantum Flux adjusts. They play a lot more passively and, and as a result, the uh, Bud Squad has to play a little more standard. Christopha goes down to a pipe Ooh, late down to sh yep. from Shamba. So now we Sizer see Quantum Flux out. He actually set up a trap over, uh, can we say the S word? The poop house. Let's call it poop house. Poop house. The excrement uh, home. The excrement the home oh. of poo. Uh, and big play in yeah. that, though, is Whisker Biscuit going down. So this, if... Quantum Flux goes hard here, they can totally stop second, so it should be okay. We do, Pal is already out there taking pot shots at people, but this this can totally be okay uh, if if Quantum Flux shows up to the fight. Sizer does get Tic Tac, so coming out onto Grey Bridge, we do have a laying exchange too, so it looks like we'll, this will probably be people slowing down. Oh, wow, Shambud's on the fat man. Wait a minute, do I hear a fun ruiner? Do I hear a skill vacuum? Oh, there it is. Just hanging out on Valley. Uh, Blink down to power. Okay. Blink down to power. I think Bud Squad is determined now to make this as possibly not fun for Quantum Flux as they possibly can. Are you having flashbacks to Season 12? Dumb brain? Uh, I'll have me for you any day, any time. <laughs> of course, disposable heroes. And that was, that was on, that was on Badlands. It was on the same It map. was on Badlands. There, and Pallet now is getting, he's, okay, he's turning on the hacks right now. The crits is now going to be popped for any moment now. Uh, here it comes from Sizer. He doesn't really get anything. There it is. People dying right now. Sticks are still on point, and it's popped. Four to four. Holy balls. Right? Prediction this, busted. Christmas <laughs> ruined. It is. Uh, the, wow. Fun vacuum, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it here first. Still viable. I have to say, I was watching Sizer for a lot of that exchange, and it was interesting that he kept putting up traps like all over the place, expecting these scouts to try to get around him, and they just they just walked right into his face. They're like, "Yeah, we know you're not gonna hit those pipes." So lots of lots of stuff going down here at mid. Power goes down already. Phaser blink and tic tac. Oh, huge, huge bomb by Lang right Drop there. Both scouts the bomb. coming out. Oh my God! Star hitting the meat right there. Uh, and I don't think Sal could win this, not with a, uh, you know, a Sean Bud with 185 health, but Sal's kind of hanging out in, in house right now. I'm not really sure what he what he's trying to do. Sal dying has to late, be, be back. he has to do the sneaky sneaky. He's, right now, nobody knows where Sal is. Uh, now, now Sizer totally saw him, so <laughs> there, there are problems for Sal now. This will come to nothing, probably. If anything, this running around with, messing around with Sal there, Probably bought Blink enough time to get Uber, and Whisker Biscuit goes down to 10. One health. He went down to one. 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 He went down I to didn't even one see that. health that did not pop. That is, that's balls of steel. Duke Nukem playing Medic for the bug Pretty squad. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, but he's going to be forced here, uh, going taking this uh, this push here. And they're actually behind uh, Quan Choke right now. The Uber is still going on. Christopher getting taken out by Lang, and they need to get a, more people into this fight right now to win it over Quantum Flux, but Quantum Flux gets a better collapse here. Blinky dropping down to 50 health, but staying alive. And Bud Squad actually 
nearly wiping here. Uh, Sean Munn being the only person. And let's see if he's going to do something immediately like crazy. He's hiding in, in Poop House right now uh, on mid, waiting for them to come through. I don't know if anybody's going to check it if they're smart enough. Um, he hears the medic just called and choke. He sees him. He's got one. Oh my god, that's two. He two shot Blinky for the drop. Big he was place. two shot himself as well, so literally nothing anyone could do about that. Yep. That was just that was just a great play by Sean Bud, and now Bud Squad picking up some of these kills as they are suiciding off trying to kill Whisker, um, which is not always the best thing I would say, the best answer to that kind of thing. But uh, but there it is. I don't really know what Blinky was doing there. He was crouched and sort of still, like hanging well, he out was there hiding for a from power because Chris had just died to a, a body shot. Maybe they didn't know where power was. So he was just hiding by the train car, and then uh, shot. There was suddenly a Sean Bud appeared. Uh, Cringe is going to go down to power here. Yeah, he's on a three kill streak. Kicked out of the air with that body shot right there. It probably was a headshot, you know. Let's on his screen. Power, yeah, on his screen. Let's see if Power can get a shot here. He's got an angle on all the people in the forward right now. There is a scout that is out of forward. Um, he's going to be trying to get back in, and I think they're not going to let him. Oh my God! Come on, guys! Oldest trick in the book. The uh, eight sickies on the uh, on the door there. Christopher picks up two kills, um, and which is gonna mean that they're gonna. Oh, well, the oh. third, the third tits kind of on Tic Tac. The third drop from Blinky of this match, and that, I I would say that's on Tic Tac. He didn't check the sticks there. Yeah, he knew they were forward holding, and that's cheeky. probably where the sticks are. Geeky cheeky stick traps. So back when TF2 was born and Badlands was played, there was a sticky trap there. Got laying on last. Oh my goodness. Trying to do stuff. Power gets another kill on Blink, so. Crispa and Tic Tac, though, still up, you know, with good health and reputably some of the, the, this team's best DMers. So let's see, you know, if they can hold on to this. I thought any second that was going to be Bud Squad's uh, round there. Yeah, that's. It's rough here. Phaser going to go down to power, but Star and power both go down. Phaser manages to get his his post-mortem rocket out of there. So we'll see Quantum Flux pushing in here. Thing, thing for Bud Squad here, as I stumble over my words, is to kind of just hold solid and make sure this point doesn't really go. Uh, it looks like it is how... Oh, oh Cringe nope, is going to go down. So Sizer managed to stop it. But we do see Panamania and Sal run over it and cap it real quick. Uh, Sal and Cringe both have pretty bad spawn timers. And Uber advantage for the Bud Squad. There is There are forward hold stickies. So, again, they're delayed quite a bit. And that'll probably give Blinky enough time to get Uber. At least, if not right now, you know, during this fight. Yeah, it looks like they are kind of second guessing them. So they wanted to go in, but now they're okay. Now they hear the call, and they have to know that that's real right now. Uh, so now it's an Uber v Uber situation, and Pala is still on sniper. So let's uh, let's see what happens here. He's sneaking around behind those crates. Oh, and he's oh, gonna get Sal right Sal, away. Yep. Oh, and now the heavy Sal too. This is push where they. Uh, they, I don't know about it, taking too many people in on this Uber. It's still Uber v Uber. Um, and it looks like Sizer's putting a whole bunch of sticks around. Phaser going down. The point is finally catch. Five to four in a massive four rounds. Pretty much back to pack uh, in the second half. Just all players making some big plays. Hey, Lang. He did something. That's amazing. That's a, that was that was awesome. So this is going to a second. Uh, this is going to a second map, ladies and gentlemen. We will see the the Viaduct rematch uh, momentarily. Wow, we pretty much saw every single type of thing that could possibly have happened in that match. We we lanes. got to see lots. Of, we saw a unfortunate pipe drop. We saw a lot of people get sniped. We saw the double wipe. We saw a four round comeback. This was probably. Blinky's worst game. Three Uber charge drops. Uh, still able to tie Whisker for amount of Ubers, but oh my god, he must. He has got to be hurting right now. Oh, and uh, the crits out of last. I forgot about that because that's, that's right. I love seeing that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That was a beautiful thing.
Uh, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in right now that we had just concluded the first nap, which was very epic, uh, ended in 5-4 to four in favor of Bud Squad, we will now go to Viaduct as soon as the server is up. Um, and yeah, we're taking a look at the stats right now. And the top fragger is... is Power. Big surprise there. <laughs> Yeah, power going uh, yep. frag king. Although uh, I should note that his his friends in Sean Bud and Size are actually quite close to him. Yeah, only that, only that's two. actually Sal. Yeah, Sal actually tied him for frags too. So yeah, some big plays made by everybody. So we've learned today, as far as these open finals go, that everywhere south of Texas, quite good at fragging things. Yeah, it's uh, it was one of those. Just ridiculous chain of events over and over and over. But uh, but yeah, so Quantum Flux kind of uh, Flux kind of dropped the ball there during that second half. I think that they had plenty of situations where they had a, a pretty clear advantage. Most notably, I think that they could have won that round had Sean Bud just not two shot at Blinky right away. Uh, you know, without anybody knowing what was going on. Um. Be, but that that's just what it is. I, I mean, it's kind of a, they're kind of throwing Chris getting picked out in a lot of situ situations where he probably should have not been where he was. Um, and, and there it is. I want to say a big shout out to both the roamers on each team because the, both Phaser and Lang made some gigantic plays uh, during those rounds. That's just, that's just amazing. Yeah. Pretty solid play uh, from them around. I, I think mainly the story of this match, like, you know, if if they're still friends with each other years from now, and they're like, oh man, you remember when we played that Open Finals? The story that they'll remember is how poorly the mids went for Quantum Flux with the wonky strat that Bud Squad was doing that you don't normally see, right? Like, that's that's going to be the thing that they take away from this match, was how how wonky the mids were for them. Yeah! Weird mids, right? Like definitely not standard, uh, but Badlands mids. They like I I really don't like teams that do this whole passive thing in Valley. But I gotta say it's a viable strategy. It definitely works. Some teams don't know how to do. It's not necessarily that it's like a wonderful super strat. It's just sometimes people see it and they don't react correctly. And as long as they drop down onto you off of the point, you're you win like that's that's what you want to have them do right <laughs> so let's see if we got an stv up yeah it doesn't look like it, it has been set up quite yet so uh yeah we're just gonna be chilling hanging out i'm excited this is a good night at tf2 it's uh it's almost 12 for those people on the east coast i know it's very late thank you all for staying out on a school night no doubt um and i have work tomorrow at I think it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, it's all right. I had to cast until 1.45 in the morning last season because of the uh, illustrious Crespi DDoS and server ah, yes. DDoS and then Blank getting DDoS and me having to solo cast, you know, all that. It was a great time. So thankfully we had a good match here and there, there wasn't even a pause at any point. So oh, I think that means for those of you sticking around for Viaduct that you're pretty much cursed. <laughs> and uh, this viaduct's gonna last about three and a half hours. Yeah. So I'm uh, buckling in. I'm ready. I'm ready to see whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely ready to see Tic Tac and Phaser. Just that what they'll be doing, if it's any indication of the last match that we saw them play on Viaduct, is they will be constantly uh, just pushing on on Power and making sure that he can't get any uh, crazy headshots to shut down, you know, pushes or to make pushes happen um so there's that yeah you've got to go hard uh when there's a sniper on the field in in viaduct that's that's like the simple solution right the if you know they have a sniper and there's no other outside concerns like uber medics or whatever you pretty much just go hard and hope it turns out okay yeah the last time that we saw these teams play i think sean bud uh, ended up going scout a little bit later on in the in the game, but uh, I think that they're gonna start right out the gate with uh, with a scout. If they if they don't, I think it'd be kind of a, a bad decision. I think they might lose a lot of rounds that they they probably don't want to win. So this is it. 
the uh, the the race for six hundred dollars for open finals, and it seems like such a big a lot so much trouble to be to put in for such a such a meager prize pot. At six hundred bucks is more I've made after over this game. <laughs> yeah, right. So I would gladly take it. But yeah, I, I so, think anybody would. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's Steve too, you know. So. We'll see. Both teams probably going to Maine next season anyways, so right now it's just for the for the pride and and the six hundo, so you definitely want that. Second place will uh they do get a little bit of money, but it's basically just like league fees for next season essentially. Uh if they you know, I don't know what their rosters are planning on doing. So I who knows if they even know since they haven't really had time to to get anything since they've they've been uh, preparing for these particular matches and all and in the case of the Bud Squad playing matches still uh, because of their being in the loser bracket, right? And uh, there's some some anger going on in in stream chat right now. Interesting, um, but yeah, there look at the, look at them. Rikachu, big shout out to Rikachu, big shout out to Blank. And the rest of the Chaluminati. Not that Blank is part of that, but there it is. Honorary member of the Chaluminati. <laughs> I, I've been told to give a shout out to Tommyist like seven times, the Australian medic. Uh, and then I always forget, so since you gave a shout out to them, I'll shout out to Tommyist. I love Tom. And make his evening. Tom's an, an, he's an awesome dude. Really chill guy. Um, so any second now, STV, I would love to see you. Yeah, someday we'll have it. Uh, can't message Kalkin about it anymore. Wow. Is he done for, like, as far as, like, Yeah, whatever? he's outy, boom bowdy. He's going to work in those politics, man. That's right, he's a lobbyist. And <laughs> I, I've, I've, met, I've met Kalkin a few times, and he's, he's always been a funny dude to hang out with. He's, uh, he's a nice guy, I like him. Blank wants to shout out to the Mad Men, so there you go. The, the, I'm sorry, uh, the, the, mud the Mud Men. men. <laughs> the Mud Men. <laughs> so special privileges for fellow casters who happen to be watching. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, we're killing time, so shout out to Shirt Short. There we go. Short wants it because I always mess up his name. Uh, whenever I've cast uh, the Rena homies in the past, <laughs> so sure, there's bro. that. And <laughs> oh, and Mana wants shoutouts. So yeah, so we're just getting all shout kinds of shoutouts. Yeah, shout out to literally everyone watching right now. Shout so, out to the best medic to ever play the game, Monkey Suit. Monkey of Suit. Speedy Cheese Esports. And. Uh... That's that's all I got really. Also to Puff for being the worst and best player on my team. So yeah, what, what are we what are we looking at next season? Let's talk about it because here we are. We got a lot of teams that have already sort of uh, been shopping around for to fill their holes. Uh, we know that there's a lot, at least uh, eight teams in open that will be moving up to IM that will still be alive with their current rosters, and we'll see if their other rosters will also. Uh, will also graduate as well with some people. I'm not really sure uh, some of these other teams that, that didn't really um, make it, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. And I am, I believe there's only a couple teams that are still sticking together, but all, all pretty much all the, the top of I am, uh, besides off top, I think is all hanging out. Um, and then main, of course, I think a lot of us are expecting to see Rena Homies or Street Hoops East, uh, yeah, Street Hoops uh, in in invite. Maybe one or one. I would one expect or both to see both. I hope so. They're both uh, great teams. I think they would do something really well for the division. Yep, I would expect to see both main main as it stands. Those the, pretty much the main teams that aren't dead will probably be playing in invite. Uh, yeah. Right. Th- being street hoops and run homies because that division was was an adventure uh it was 
it was that same feeling of playoffs, but basically the whole season. So like every, the, you know, you play playing an open, maybe even an IM, you're like, oh, you know, this match won't be that bad. And you get to have a little fun and just kind of hang out with your bros and play video games. But <laughs> main was every single match could be, could have been a five, four, uh, for the most part. Yeah. So that that made it really exhausting, and uh, as as shown by the amount of team death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of true. I, you know, to a certain extent, and I've talked about this a little bit uh, with some friends, and I think with you at one point, is that you know maybe a lot of those open teams. I mean, I can't say talk for all of them because Street Hoops was obviously an open move up, and they were they were great, they were awesome, they 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 really improved. But some of the other open teams might have been a little bit out of class there um, in that division, and maybe it was sort of a premature move up. But it still was a very competitive division, and, I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell you that. You were you were in it, so... <laughs> yeah, I got to enjoy the sadness. Enjoy uh, the sadness. I got, to, I got to live it. We're still waiting on that STV just for an update. Uh, it's not coming down the pipeline just yet. Uh... I may pass a request to good old killing in the name the illustrious ESCA admin and that, see when we could get that. That's that's a Rage Against the Machine reference, right? Like I've always, I've, I've known Killing for a while, but like I've never like asked him and like, "Hey, you really like that band, don't you?" That's weird. Is that rude? It's not that rude. I don't think so. So uh, I guess Sean Bud says in in chat that they're still setting up the server. So we'll see. What is happening right now? Uh, so yeah, they're still setting up. Blank is asking for shoutouts to a certain someone to whom he owes some vodka. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go. I'm getting friend requests, so that's cool. <laughs> Nobody knows, knows yeah. my, my, my profile. Well, there you go. <laughs> London, the secret hider. And then uh, a killing says officially they are setting up. So we'll wait around on that a little bit more. Not, you know, a little bit of a delay, but not terrible. Uh, and then for invite, we've got the the Banny team, right. the I fifty two ready Banny team, mix Froyo up with tech. some changes. Yes. Uh, lit more or less staying the same. I think there's going to be a change on medic there, or pocket, or or roamer. Like somebody's going to move somewhere uh, on lit, so they won't necessarily be the same. Anime is about pretty much the same. They with two different scouts. I think uh, I saw Indust trying out for them. I'm not sure if that he was just ringing or whatever, but he definitely was playing with, with the current Lost in Translation dudes uh, yesterday night. So that's, that's, so that's a potential. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I don't know about where is Sure Shot. I'm hearing a lot of different things about them. Uh, as to whether or not they're like two players or four players or not existing, six cuties is more or less doing a rebuild. They lost their their medic and both soldiers uh, in the off season, so they're doing kind of a rebuild. And I know Rick's team is Audi. Uh, I can't remember what they were called. They were the ninth place team, uh, and and then six cuties, right? Yeah, yeah, six cuties is they're doing their little rebuild. Oh, that's right, you just said that. I'm yeah. <laughs> uh and then for controversial open sightings next season we have Vector reforming in open. You know, we had an opportunity to play them and I think some of them are, are off classing and I think and I'm not trying to be mean right now, but I think that they are in the appropriate division. I'm not trying to be mean. I know that was a little salty. I know that was that sounded really, really rude, but uh, I'm just saying. Uh, shout out to Kalkin, who actually is in stream chat. Uh, our our beloved son, Kalkin. 
What's up, Carson? But yeah, so uh, yeah, that's 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 all we can really talk about for next season without seeing some actual rosters come about. Yeah, we don't. To be honest, we don't really know. So the it's kind of like with presidential elections, you always have the October surprise, which happens about two days before the season starts. Right. Yeah, you know what? I think for right now we could play word stat. games. Now let's check the stats page down. Let's put a little, let's put some little, let's put some jams on. Dash, my man. Please, sir, and uh, let's just just kick it for a second. Um, everybody, stick around. The next map is coming up as soon as the STV is up. We will uh, be live again. Uh, but yeah, thank you for uh, for kicking in with us, friends. <laughs>